So the Barista Touch is one of Breville's newer models. It comes with a lot of their latest features, including the advanced heating system, a full color touchscreen, and an automatic steam wand. I'm gonna go through all the features on this and make an espresso and a latte with you so you can just see how all this works. So first, let's just talk about the design. You can see it's got the classic Breville look with a stainless steel exterior, more minimalist design. The Touch, though, actually is a little bit slimmer than some of their other models like the Breville Dual Boiler or the Barista Pro. You'll notice there's no big knobs on the side, and it's actually got some sharper corners to it. I actually like the slimmer model. It fits a little bit nicer in our kitchen, which I enjoy. You will notice that it has a drip tray that pulls out, compartment behind it. However, I will point out the slimmer design does mean that the drip tray is a little bit smaller, so you will be emptying it out more often. Now let's talk about the interface here, which is what the machine is named after, it's touch screen. You can see you have the different drink options here, and you can also add your own custom drink option if you'd like. Also, you've got the settings button, which has more options for changing the temperature of your water or your milk. Then you can also click this information icon, which has some tutorials of the machine. Now, first I wanna say that this is a really nice screen. I never had issues hitting the wrong button. It was always right on, which I appreciate. I'm someone who's a little bit skeptical of this kind of technology, especially when it's such a small screen, but I never had any issues with it. So credit to Breville for doing this right. Also, the screen is very intuitive. I never needed to use the manual to figure out where to go. It was all right there. Now, one con of the machine is I didn't feel like I quite used all the features though. So let's spend a little bit more time talking about the drink options so you can understand how it works. So there's five drink options here, the espresso, Americano, and then three milk options, latte, flat white, and cappuccino. You can also add hot water, or like I said, you can make your own drink. Now let's talk about these milk drinks so you understand how they're different, because that's probably where you're gonna be using the most. So the latte should be the largest drink that's mostly steamed milk with a little bit of foam on top. Meanwhile, the cappuccino is a smaller drink, which is equal parts espresso, steamed milk, and foam. And the flat white is similar to a cappuccino in the sense that it's a smaller drink, but it doesn't have any foam. So it's just espresso and steamed milk. Now, the thing is, like I was saying earlier, don't really use the differences on this machine. For example, if you look at a latte, you'll see the grind, the brew, and the milk is almost the exact same as a cappuccino. When you look at them both side by side, you'll notice the only difference is the milk texture is just one setting higher, which on a scale of one to eight isn't that much actually. So I do find that you're probably just gonna choose one option here and use that going forward. Now let's talk about the internals of the machine. So it does come with Breville's latest Thermojet heating system. It's their advanced thermal coil, and it's just a thinner metal substrate where it helps the machine start within three seconds. Now that is really nice and a really quick startup time. Now one downside of that though, is you do need to run a blank shot. So make sure you lock in your portafilter and just run water through it to start because the brew head does not heat up as fast as the heating element here. I also found the Thermojet is nice because it has very good temperature consistency, especially for a consumer machine like this. There's also the integrated conical bird grinder, which is the same as the other Breville models. What I do like though, is that there are 30 settings on this model. And that just gives you a wider range to dial in your espresso. There's a portafilter holder right here, and you can also pause it in between if you want to distribute the grounds, which is also nice. So now let's make an espresso. So I'm going to use the stock Breville portafilter, and I'll actually make sure to use a scale. One thing I'll point out is that it doses everything based on time, but you generally want to make sure you have the weights correctly so you can get a one to two ratio of coffee to espresso. So when you click the drink, you'll see that there's a latte and you'll see that there's the three settings here for grinding in the left, brewing in the middle, and the milk frothing on the right. And that's pretty much the same for all of the drinks. So like I said, I usually just hit latte, mostly because it's in the middle. That's how I get started. So now that we're here, we're gonna hit grind. Even pause it. Quick tap. Now we're right at 17 and a half grams, which is where I want. Now one downside of the Breville grinder is it does tend to produce fairly clumpy grounds. So you want to use a WDT, which is the little needle device that helps you break up the clumps. I have one here. This is my homemade one at home. So all you need is a wine cork and then some acupuncture needles. Really not complicated. 
once you break up the clumps, quickly just level the coffee a little bit. We'll side taps here. Now, I'm also using this new tamper from iCap or iCappy. And this is really nice because it's actually self-levels with a ridge on the side. And so you always get a flat tamp every time. So got this recently, really liking it. Makes your life a lot easier. Lock in the portafilter. We're going to use our scale again. And like I said, this machine doses based on time. Now, I like to do it manually to make sure I'm getting the right weight out. So what you can do is just hold the brew button, and it'll change to manual mode. Then you just push it to get started. You can see we've got 40 grams out, so pretty close to one to two ratio. The shot looks really nice. There's a good crema on it. So I'm pretty happy with this one. Good taste too. Okay, so now let's talk about the steam wand, which is my favorite part about this machine. So like I said earlier, the Barista Touch has an automatic steam wand. You'll notice there's this temperature sensor right in the base here that regulates all the frothing activity. So all you really need to do is fill up your milk jug, put it underneath, and then choose your settings and the machine will do the rest. I think I do about five ounces of milk in this jug, which is about enough is all you need. So now before you start frothing, you'll see the settings are right here on every drink screen on the right. Now there's settings for temperature and for texture. So the machine defaults to about 150 degrees milk temperature. Now I find that's a little too high. You can actually go to your setting and change your milk temperature from a default of 150 to 140. And we have found that actually in various studies, people prefer 140 degree coffee. They actually prefer it when it's a little bit cooler. Actually, if you're doing a regular cupping, which is a coffee tasting, you taste the coffee at three different temperatures to see the full range of flavor. Personally, if you haven't done a cupping, I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. So now we're going to go to 140 degree temperature. And we're also going to choose a texture setting of about three. So this texture goes from one to eight on this machine. Now, we've done it at different textures, and we found that it actually makes a difference. I don't quite understand how the machine works at different texture settings, but it does work. I found that from a 1 to just getting a heated milk, to a 5, getting some milk with a little bit of foam on top, to an 8, where you're getting a true kind of cappuccino with a thick foam on top. I found if you're using a non-dairy milk, like an oat milk, you should go two settings higher. But we're going to go three, because I prefer something closer to a flat white. And so once you push this, the machine does the rest. Actually, the temperature go up as it gets close to that and stops right at 140. So now that we're done milk frothing, one other thing to note that I really like about the steam wand is it's self-cleaning. So you take the milk out, lift the wand up, and all you need to do is give it one quick wipe, and then the machine auto purges, which is really nice. And not only does it auto purge, but actually the steam wand is partially insulated. I mean, once you take the tip off, there's a little bit of plastic on the inside. There's actually a full plastic layer on the steam wand. And what that does, is it keeps the milk from just getting totally crusted on the steam wand. So when you clean it off, like I said, it's one quick wipe and it's done. So it's really no mess. When we reviewed the Breville Bambino Plus on this channel, I had some mixed thoughts on it. I felt like the self clean was a little aggressive and it sprayed everywhere. That's not the case in the touch because the drip tray actually has two layers. It has this metal top and then has a plastic layer before the bottom. And that just prevents the purging from going everywhere when you're cleaning off the wand. So really nice all around. So I'll try and pour this out, see if we can get some latte art. Not bad, by my standards at least. So overall, I like this machine a lot more than I thought. It really came down to that steam wand. I'm not a fan of steaming milk, and I'm not going to latte art, as I've said before on this channel. And so having this that has a lot of different settings, a lot of different temperature changes, that's very accurate every time, it also is really easy to clean, to me was a big plus. Now the thing is, this machine does cost over $1,000, so it's a little bit on the pricier end of the Breville models. I think it really depends how much you value ease of use. If you're making lattes every day and you want something that's easier to clean, this is the machine for you. It'll work great. 
Now, if you're just making espressos and Americanos, I would go with the Breville Barista Pro, which to me actually may have the even easier interface because it's just a little simpler. And it still has a very good steam wand, maybe even better if you're really into steam milk. Overall though, this is a great choice. You can look and find the product link in the description below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate if you hit like or subscribe to see future videos because it really supports our channel.